Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video where I'm going to talk you through how I choose a palette of colours before I start to paint. I'll discuss the reasons why this is a good habit to get into and give you lots of tips to improve your colour choosing accuracy. But I'll also discuss how you can incorporate some knowledge of colour theory so that you're doing more than simply choosing exactly the colours that you see in the photo reference. I hope that you'll find this tutorial here helpful. If you do then please do remember to subscribe to my channel and you also might want to check out my playlist on colour theory as those videos link really well into this one. I also have a Patreon channel if you'd like to learn even more and support me in making all of my videos. couple of videos like this one already but I think it's one that's worth repeating as each different subject matter provides a different challenge and this time I'm going to use this piece of a lioness which I created as a practice run for an online workshop with Unison Colour Soft Pastels and when I do a workshop collaboration with this pastel company I also get to choose a palette of colours which the participants can purchase to work along with me. So the choosing of the colours for this piece needed to be exact. Whereas other times before I start to paint I might choose out some colours and then add or subtract other colours as I go. But I wanted Unison to send me this set before I painted my practice run. So this had to be perfect. But firstly why is this even a good idea? Well, sometimes when you get stuck into a painting, you tend to get a bit preoccupied or distracted with what's going on on your paper. And having to keep stopping to choose more colours makes it quite difficult to get going. Taking some time before you start to paint to really study the photo reference will save you a lot of time and energy in the painting process. It also gives you an opportunity to consider how you can be smarter with your colour choices. Are there any nice complementary relationships that you can include or enhance? How are you going to represent light and shade using your colours? Basically, it's just good preparation. And it's pretty common in other mediums like oil paints or acrylics to prepare your palette a little and get some pigment squeezed out onto the palette. And pastel just is not that different. The first thing I'll do is get my image on screen. I like to work from a screen as the quality of the colours here is much better than you'll get from a printout. Plus I can zoom in, lighten areas, get a better look at what's going on. I'll have my image on screen in front of me and then start to look at all of my pastels together. Over the years, I've got a lot better at seeing the colours in the reference. But if that's something that you're still struggling with, I will share some great tips at the end of the video to help you isolate colours and simplify what you see. But when I'm choosing colours, I have a bit of a formula that I stick to each and every time. So where do I start? Well, in every painting, I'm going to need a range of values. And I tend to split that roughly into three. So I'm going to need some dark tones, some mid tones, and some highlights. And within those categories, I'm quite likely to need both warm versions and cool versions. So that's about six colour categories that, in general, I try to think about. For example, with this lioness, can I see some warm highlights? And what about the mid-tones? Well, actually, this piece is all about the warmth. So my choice of cool colours in this one was limited. Even the greens that I chose were mostly warmer ones with more yellow content. And in my darker values, again, it's more on the warmer side of the browns. But I do choose a cold or dark brown, which I can see running through the fur. 
So try to simplify what it is you're looking for in the first place. Have you covered a good range of darks, mids and light tones? And have you thought about warm and cool tones? That alone will get you started with a decent palette. And when I'm actually choosing the colours from my pastel range, which are sitting in front of me, to the side of my desk and then on these shelves behind me. So I've got all of my colours out in view, which always helps when I'm searching for particular colours. And I will literally have the computer screen with my image. Perhaps I'm zooming in, um, perhaps I'm lightening certain areas, working with the photo reference on screen to try and bring out as much colour as I can. And I will literally then just pick trays of certain colours for example, I knew that I wanted a vibrant red tone in this one, so I'll take my red tray and I'll literally look at the photo reference and start choosing out particular colours. Perhaps I'll hold them up to that area on the screen and compare them. So it's quite handy to have your colours arranged into groups so that you can compare them directly with the photo reference. So of course, with all of these warm tones within the lion, I knew that I would be choosing a lot of colours from my warm brown tray, my yellow and orange tray, and of course that red tray that I just showed you. So it really does help to have your colours organised a little bit in your studio so that you have an easier time looking for the colours that you need. Now for this lioness, I needed to plan even further because I wanted to change the background from the original photo reference. It's nice enough, but it's very similar to the colours in the lion and didn't make that nice a contrast. But when I zoomed in on the photo reference, I could see little accents of bright red, which will add vibrance and warmth to the yellows and oranges. So my plan was to bring some greens into the background, knowing that red and green are complementary or opposite colours. And from my knowledge of colour theory, that means I know that this will make a pleasing combination of colours. And honestly, when I look at this set, my favourite part is this red and green corner. I think this corner looks delicious. And if the colours look good together in your palette, then there's a good chance that they're going to look good together in the painting. So even before I chose the colours exactly for this set, I, on Photoshop, did a little mock-up of what the lion might look like with some green tones behind it, and I played about with the different shades of green that I could use. But with some knowledge of colour theory, I also know that I could have taken this piece in a slightly different direction, I could have leaned more heavily on the yellows and oranges of the lion and used a blue background instead. That also would have worked quite nicely. So you don't have to stick exactly with what you see in the photo reference. This is where you can apply colour theory to enhance the effect that you want to create. And usually these decisions are made in my planning stages. But like I mentioned at the start, please do check out my full playlist on colour theory if that's something that you'd like to learn more about. And like I mentioned, just looking at the photo reference is enough for me these days to think about the colours and consider all of the different options. But if you're still struggling to see colours and simplify what you're seeing, then here are some useful tricks that might help you. So most of these tricks are using your computer to augment the photo reference. Now you can use a software program like Photoshop, but there are also lots of free softwares that do very similar jobs. The most simple trick is to change your reference into grayscale. When you put it back to colour, you're sort of tricking your eyes, like shocking them with the colour after seeing it in monochrome. You can even use editing software to increase the vibrance or saturation. Again, it's like you're shocking your eyes into seeing more colour. It's hard not to continue seeing those oversaturated colours when the reference is returned to normal. 
You can also zoom right in on an area of the reference. This helps to isolate the colors more, letting you focus on one at a time. But the best trick is something that I often do for my critique students. When I want to point out more colors that they could have included in their painting. And I'm going to give you a quick demo now on Photoshop, but you can do this on some free editing softwares and I'll add some links in my description below. So with my reference image in Photoshop, the first thing I need to do is make my canvas a little bit bigger so that I can add some of these colour swatches, perhaps down one side or along the bottom, whichever you prefer. Then I just shift my reference image to one side. Now you can give yourself a background colour here for your colour swatches to show up against. You could use black or dark grey like in Photoshop background or even just plain white will do. Next I choose the eyedropper tool. You can see this tool down the left side. And when you click on any part of the photo reference, it will select that colour and you can see it pop up in this little box down here. And it gives you that exact colour sample. So even just playing with the eyedropper tool for a while can be a real eye opener at picking out some extra colours that you couldn't isolate with your own eyes. Now I want to create these little colour swatches so I choose the ellipse tool and now if you hold down shift while you make the ellipse shape it will give you a perfect circle. So hold down shift, make your circle shape, then I choose a line and I draw that line from the circle to where I picked out the colour from. Now when I look at the line initially this is much too thin so I undo that one and up here at the top you can change the width of the line. So let's try 5 pixels. Just experiment with this, it'll, it'll depend how big your photo reference is as to how big you need to go with the width of the line. So 5 pixels wasn't even enough, let's try and double that. I just want the line to be visible as it's quite nice to see that same colour come straight across into the image. It really helps you visualise the colours better. So I'll do another one, back into the eyedropper. It's important to put each one of these in a new layer. So. Over to the right there I've just chosen to add a new layer. Then I'll choose another colour using the eyedropper tool. You can see the colour pop up in the little box to the left. Then back into my ellipse tool I hold down shift, I make the circle shape and then I make the line from the circle to where I chose the colour. So it's just repeat that again and again. Keep creating a new layer for each new colour swatch. And of course I'm not too fussy whether all the circles are exactly the same size. This is literally just a little demo that I do for my critique students when Perhaps I want to point out some other colours in the photo reference that they could have included in their painting and this is how I show them where I'm getting those colours from. And I think it really helps to visualise colours better, to even just to sit and play about with the eyedropper tool. You don't even have to bother making the colour swatches, but I literally do this for my critique students. And of course I will also say that the eyedropper will only get you so far. It will only choose colours that are actually in the photo reference. So I mentioned earlier that I changed the background in this piece to include green colours. Well I also brought some of those green colours into the dark shadows on the lion's face. And I could sit here all day with the eyedropper tool and I would never find those dark greens in the lion's face. So it was my knowledge of colour theory 
and knowing what I wanted to do with this piece to enhance the photo reference further in my painting. So the eyedropper will only get you so far in that you will be able to see what's actually in the photo reference. After that, it's totally up to you and your artistic license to take it further. So if you're struggling to see more colour in your reference, I hope that some of these tricks might be helpful for you. And that everything else I spoke about in this video not only convinces you of the benefits of being more prepared, but also gives you some kind of formula to get you started. Think about your darks, your mids, your lights, and whether you need warm or cool versions of those. And if you've got a little selection of all of those covered, then you're well prepared to start painting. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. Please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and be sure to check out lots of my other playlists where I have lots more informative videos, both about pastel, about painting in general, and about life as an artist too. And if you want to learn even more, then do check me out on my Patreon channel. You can also visit my website library where you can see all of the tutorials that I have available already. But thanks very much for watching here and until next time, happy pastling.